<laughs> hey, question for you. If you weren't raw food romance, mm. if you had zero followers, like as yes. of today, and you didn't have a social media following, anything like that, you didn't have any products, and you were just starting out with like, you, let's say you just graduated college or university with like general studies, okay. and you're at your current age, what would you do for work? Would you decide, hey, I'm going to get on social media or would you do something in real life or would you go get a job somewhere? What would you do for, for money? Oh man, that's a good question. I would, I mean, knowing myself, <laughs> I would try to do something on my own, like either do photography or art or I don't know, but I would I would start online just because that's where everything is. That's where the people are. That's where you're, you're going to so, find. So you would do like photography art. So you'd like make an Instagram page and then show people your photography work and then say, Hey, if you want to shoot, just book a photo shoot with me. Yeah, probably. If I wasn't raw food romance, I mean, yeah. <laughs> if I started with no followers and I, I would just start from scratch. <laughs> okay. What if you had no photography experience as well? Okay. Um, I would, well, I obviously would, if I didn't know what I was going to do, I would probably just get a job anywhere just to pay the bills first. And then I would work on uh, what really makes me feel fulfilled. Like whether that be art or um, helping others in some way. I'm not sure really. That's a really good question. <laughs> so you'd get a job. Let's say your job is paying, let's say on, over the year, it's paying 50 grand a year. Damn, that's good. <laughs> is it? I don't know. I think that's 50 grand a year. I don't, is that good? I don't think so. No, I mean, all the jobs that I had in the past were like 24,000 a year. Like well, that was back in the day when 24 day. grand was like <laughs> probably 50 grand. But <laughs> yeah, let's say 50 grand. Yeah. So let's say you get a 50 grand a year job but it's not fulfilling. You're just doing it for the, for the money. What do you, how do you actually then pivot to, to do your own thing? What would you do? Again, if you have no photography experience. Yeah. I don't know. That's such a good question. I would do art. Yeah. Like, like painting or something, drawing, painting, drawing. Yeah. That's probably what I would do. And you would you sell that? Mm -hmm. I would also uh, teach actually it probably would also, I have really good experience with um, digital design too. So I could take that or do freelance work. Yeah. Freelance work. Freelance work. Yeah. 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 Freelance work. Yeah. I think if I would do the same, I would do like freelance video editing work. Mm. I would yeah. first, but it didn't have, if I just got a college university or something, I would definitely have a job just to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. But then I would quickly get into like freelance work. And what I would do, knowing what I know now, is I would do freelance work just long enough to where I like got it pretty much figured out and, and so that I can like be making like a 5K a month consistently. And then I would quickly, hopefully within the first like six months or so, learn that fast enough and start bringing in that kind of money that quickly to then create a program, create a course, teaching people how to get 5K a month as a video editor. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I would probably teach on like art skills, like how to draw certain things and or design, like teach how to use Photoshop, how to use Illustrator, mm -hmm. all of those things too. You could make a course on that. Yeah, you could even, I was thinking this too. It's like, you can always start out with like, let's say we're to do a YouTube channel on how to draw or how to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Just do a YouTube channel on, on how to do that stuff, but I really good videos grow the YouTube channel to a point where it's like, you know, doing really well. And then teach people how you grew the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Like Teaching yeah. what you did to get a result is like gonna yield good profits this is what people want to buy. Mm -hmm. How did you do that thing? So even if it's for something like growing your Instagram to 10,000 followers, right? Or getting 10,000 followers on YouTube or whatever, like, learning how to do a skill like that for yourself and then turning on teaching people how you did it. That's a cool way of like starting out with something kind of general 
mm. like just teaching art on YouTube. He's like, how, how do I make money from art? How do, I, how do I make money with my music? Right? People, everyone wants to know that. But if you just had a YouTube channel with like all your music on it and it gets to a point where it's doing pretty well, then you can just teach people how you grew your YouTube channel with your own music mm -hmm. or your dancing or your art. Right? Exactly. So, teaching how you got there. Yeah. That's why it works in the health industry because you teach people how you got to whatever level True. of health you have. True. Yeah. Most of us weren't all vegan at one point. We became vegan. We got good results. Now we're like, oh, I'll show someone how. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, listen, a lot of people don't feel like they're, they're, they're in that place mentally to teach other people with veganism because like, oh, like I still got a ways to go. I don't feel super confident with my, with my own life. How dare I help somebody feel confident with their life? You know? So how would you approach that? That's a tough one um, because, oh, that's such a tough one. Because <laughs> if, you, if you don't feel confident in what you're teaching, um, then you're going to have to get confident in what you're teaching, right? Go to others who have done it and ask them questions. Ask questions on how, like if, you, if you're not confident in a vegan diet, go research a vegan diet and research what the doctors are saying and research all of that kind of stuff and get confident in your position and what you have to teach. Because if you're not confident, then it's really hard to sell something. My very first personal training session, I was so unconfident. I had to go to this girl's house and give her a workout. I've never oh done a session before. It's my first client. And I had to not only do fitness training with her, but like give her nutrition tips. And I've never coached anyone on nutrition before. So before I left the house, I spent like an hour watching like Dr. Doug Graham and Life Regenerator on YouTube and like taking notes on like what they were saying. And I had like this piece of paper full of all my notes, what I was going to tell this girl when I got to her house. Cause I've never taught nutrition before ever. And I'm going to this girl's house to, she's going to pay me. And so I have these notes on my card and I sit down at her house, cards in my pocket. And she's like, cool. So what do we do first? And I'm like, oh, I got that notepad. This is my pocket. It'd be awkward if I just take it out and start reading it. Right. So I just start making stuff up. I'm like, okay, well first we'll do this. And as she's doing that, I'm thinking like, what to do next? Now she's doing that. I'm like, okay, like well, next we'll do that. And then she does that. And then I'm like, okay, well, next we'll do that. And it just, the whole session just flows like that. Like one thing after the next, and you just figure it out as you go. Right. I was, I was doing this, figuring it out as I, as I went. And by the end of the session, she was so grateful. She's like, Oh my God, thank you so much. That was awesome. It's freaking awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait for the next session. I left her house feeling so happy. Left her house, looked up at the sky. I was like, ah, like, this is amazing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the notes in my pocket. I took them out. I, I looked at them. Useless. Like, I didn't need to say any of that stuff. I could just be myself and just say what I wanted to say, you know. But the notes at least allowed me to feel more confident going into it. Mm. Didn't actually use them. It's just like a certificate. Like, I'm, I was a certified personal trainer as well. Mm. Useless certificate in terms of, like, teaching me stuff that's actually helpful. Uh, I just got the certificate to feel more confident. Mm -hmm. Same with like, my, I became like a plant-based nutrition, certified plant-based nutritionist, same thing. I got certified, but it's useless in terms of what I actually taught. It just gave me confidence. Yeah, I know there's so many times in the last six years that I've been teaching raw foods that I, every once in a while, I feel like I need to go get certified. And it's like that old ingrained belief that I need a certification from someone else like you're getting advice from someone else and we don't know if everything's like solid black or white like this is how it is right like their science is always changing and we have to change with the science and that's why you know being up on research is a good idea but when it comes down to it it's your confidence in what you are teaching and what you have learned because again like there's, there's people out there that teach some pretty intense stuff that I don't agree with, right? Like keto or, you know, like high fat animal product diets and stuff. And I don't agree with that, but from their perspective, they do. And it sells because they're confident, which is unfortunate because people, 
uh, <laughs> I mean, again, from my perspective, it's not something that I would teach. Um, and vice versa, right? They're looking at us thinking yeah. it's unfortunate. Let's just teaching this raw food romance bull crap. Like it just doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. Like they're genuinely disappointed in all the vegans spreading the vegan propaganda, you know? And they're like genuine. They're not like bad people. They just truly believe that veganism just is wrong. Right. And so you're going to have these different beliefs all around the internet. And like, it, there's no diet out there and there's no program out there that's, there's, that's like agreed upon by hundred percent of the planet saying like, yes, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Everyone's going to disagree with one or another on, on, on another topic, right. On, on, on something. And so a lot of people, myself included in the past, have been afraid of like being wrong. What if I say something on social media that's actually wrong but, and it's up there forever? Or what if I change my opinion, right? What if I change my mind in the future and I don't, and I no longer believe in, you know, blending orange juice with bananas, right? What if I stop believing in that? How, how like, that's not cool for me to put that out on Zoom or on, on YouTube and then it's up there forever, right? So, I mean, you have to, we have to get over that, right? We just got to get over that and just put it out there and just flow and just be ourselves mm -hmm. and, and just, uh, look, if you want to delete a video in the future, just delete it. But I've, I don't think I've deleted too many videos I've ever put up. I've never deleted a video. Yeah. Yeah. Never felt I had to, um, interesting though, too, like confidence there is nobody on this planet who knows your story better than you. Mm. So if you're, if somebody's looking for confidence, just go back to themselves and share, share your story because you are the expert in your story yeah. and no one else can tell you that it's wrong because it's your life, right? Your experiences and stuff. So yeah, confidence is in yourself. That's so, so true because people are like, oh, wow, Ted, you put together a webinar. I could never put together a webinar. I don't know all the information about that thing. But you go and look at my webinar and it's like, it's just, it has four stories in it. It has like an origin story and then it has like three secrets, which are just three other stories about how I changed my perspective on the way I thought things work. And a webinar is just that, it's just like four different stories. And that's why I can say it so confidently. And when you share your story with people, like they, they resonate with it and they, they, they just like, they can follow along a lot easier and uh, they remember it. I just got off a call with some guy today and he's like, oh man, like I remember your story from your webinar, but even, even when you were a kid and how you worked at A&W, blah, blah, blah. Like he remembers my story. He doesn't remember all the facts in the webinar. Most people get on the call, they're like, okay, so like, what, what, are, what are you offering again? Like I totally forget. They have no idea what the actual offer is. They just remember the story that got them to care enough about booking a call. How it made them feel. Yeah. Yeah. And so exactly. You're right. Like no one knows your story better than you. And you are an expert in your own story and no one can ever tell you that you're wrong with your own story and your own experiences, mm -hmm. your own experiences, just what works for you. Yeah. I exactly. taught I, you and I teach at, at UK fruit festival and the Woodstock fruit festival, right? We're not certified at all. Why are we teaching? because we have some experience and we're confident enough to talk about our experiences with others. Mm -hmm. And that's all we teach. Like I was teaching strength training at the UK fruit fest. And I'm like, why am I the one teaching strength training? Because I have some experience. That's it. I just have experience. Like I've just lifted some weights and I'm not big. I'm not anything. I just know how to lift weights and because I've done it and I'm happy to share, happy to teach. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you putting together these recipes, like, you're not certified, Lisa. How dare you? <laughs> I'm not a certified chef, <laughs> but yeah. I have experience making delicious raw recipes, and I have experience sticking to a raw vegan diet long term. And those recipes are what helped me. 